In this lesson, we're going to look at using tools to create shapes precisely. So precisely is going to be key in this, that we aren't going to be just sketching designs. We're going to actually be using compasses and straight edges to design, to make these designs. So the tools that we're going to be using is a compass, which is a circle drawing tool. Okay, and then, whoops, and then just a straight edge, which is like a ruler, just no measurements. Okay, so the other one is a straight edge. And this just will be for drawing straight lines, but not actually measuring anything. So in this first activity, so you will have a student workbook that'll go along with this. And so you are just supposed to look at copying this figure using only a pencil and no other tools. So there's some space right here to the right of your drawing where you can where you can do this. Again, this one is just a sketch. So now you're just trying to sketch this. So just copy it over as best you can. Okay, so just trying to copy that using just a pencil and no other tools. So now in the space in your workbook, you um, will, will need to have a compass for this. So this compass, just start using your compass, just play around with it. You'll open up your compass. This will change the radius of your circle and then just draw a few circles in using your tools. So just draw a few different sizes, get yourself comfortable making larger circles, smaller circles with that compass. And then just draw a few line segments. So this one you'll just need, like I said, a ruler that you're not actually using the measurements on, um, a note card, the side of a pencil box, something like that, to just get yourself some lines that you can draw. Okay, and then just draw a few different sized segments wherever, just practice at the bottom of that page in your workbook. So again, this is on the bottom of page six of your workbook. So then if you flip the page, then we're actually going to start following some directions. So this says draw a point and label it A. So just draw a point um, anywhere, label it A. So in the space um, provided there at the bottom of your workbook on page seven. So draw a point, label it A. We label points with capital letter A's. Now it says draw a circle centered at A that has the same radius, okay, the same radius as the length of segment PQ. So we're going to take our compass, we're going to set one point on P, and then open it to the same width as segment Q. Then you're just going to pick your compass up, move it over to point A, and draw a circle. So this ensures that this circle is the same size as this. Now it says mark another point on the circle and label it B. So anywhere on the circle. So that's going to be on this red line. So this would be outside of the circle. This would be inside of the circle. You want to draw a point on the circle and label it B. Now we're gonna draw another circle that has a center. So you're gonna put the metal point of your compass on B and goes through point A. So we wanna make sure then that our pencil touches A. So if you've changed your compass size, just open it up to touch A and then draw a circle around B. So centered at B through A. Now it says draw a line segment between A and B. So this last one, draw a line segment, you'll use a straight edge, so make sure you have some type of ruler or straight edge to then draw a segment between these two. So now when we're taking a look at the first two things that you've done, so now you drew a sketch here of this diagram. Okay, you just drew a sketch, did it as best you can, probably have some messy circles, probably not very straight lines. 
And if we were to like look at your drawing on top of this one, not gonna be exact, right? Not exactly the same. And then if we take a look at this new drawing that you created, you've actually recreated this exact shape here. Now it's rotated a little bit. I'm just gonna group these together, bring it over here, but we could rotate this. And then this is exactly the same shape and size as the original drawing. So you've reconstructed that with these tools, the compass and the straight edge. So next we're gonna take a look at what makes there be illegal construction moves, okay? So what would make there be illegal construction moves? So in this one, it says complete each step below in your student workbook. This is on page eight in your student workbook. So create a circle centered at A with a radius of AB. So again, centered at A, which means the metal point, and then the radius AB is how wide you open your compass. So oops, let's see. All right, so then set your compass on the end, open it all the way to the edge of B. Okay, so that's centered at A, radius A, B, so you're gonna draw all the way around. Okay, just draw a big circle there. Now it says, estimate the midpoint of segment A, B, and label it C. So midpoint being the middle of the segment. Okay, so you wanna try and come up with the middle of the segment here. Label it C. Create a circle centered at C. So the center is, or sorry, at B, center at B with a radius of BC. So again, we're gonna move the center of the metal part of our compass to B, centered at B. And then we want it to be open to a width of BC and draw a circle. And it says this creates two intersection points. So intersection is where the two circles hit. So where this red and green circle are intersecting or touching. And it says label the one towards the top as D. So we're gonna label this intersection point as D. And the one towards the bottom as E. Then it says, use your straight edge to connect points A, D, and E. So we're gonna do three different segments. So we're gonna connect A to D, D to E, and E to A. So now if you were in class, what we would be doing is comparing your drawing to somebody else's, okay? And seeing if they are the same size or if they are different sizes. And what happens is this one actually allows you to end up with different pictures than somebody else. So you're not creating the exact same picture as somebody else. And there's, because there's one step in this construction, okay, in these directions that didn't have a precise spot, okay? And it was step number two that said the word estimate. So estimating is just a guess, okay? And when we guess, that leaves it up for interpretation on different people's construction. So this word estimate, where you're guessing where the middle is, means that you could have guessed a little bit further over here or a little bit further this way, and that would have changed the size of your green circle and this triangle. So when we're doing precise measurements, we need to have exact instructions to follow. So then in this activity three, if you had tracing paper, what this just wants you to do is just draw a hexagon as best you can. So if you just draw this, so this is on page nine of your workbook. So right next to this hexagon, you're just gonna freehand draw so you're just gonna freehand draw a hexagon in here. You're gonna try and copy this hexagon again. Okay, so just do the best you can over there. And you probably don't even need tracing paper, but tracing paper just wants you to copy this onto a piece of tracing paper and then try to fold it in half and see what happens. 
So essentially what it's wanting you to do is just try and fold it right in half. Will it actually fold on itself? Did you do a good job drawing this regular hexagon exactly? And you can see in mine, I did not. Okay, this is not going to fold over on itself because I did not do a great job of getting this exact. Most of us don't when we're drawing freehand. So what then we were, which, well, excuse me, what then we're trying to do in number two, okay, is, which is at the bottom of page nine, is you were trying to construct a regular hexagon. So this segment right here is actually the length of one of these sides. So if you open your compass, you will see that if you open the compass on these two points, it's exactly the same as this length in your workbook. And so they've done the first couple constructions here for you in trying to create the regular hexagon. So if you'll notice, Okay, they opened up to this width. Okay, so on this point, they opened up to this width and they just drew um, a circle. So drew a circle around here. Whoops. Okay, so drew this circle. Then they just selected a random point, okay, on the circle. So they went to this circle drew another circle around here and marked the intersection. Okay, so you can see that that's where both of those circles intersect. So I'm just gonna get the rest of this off of here so you can see. But they went and drew this circle, picked a point, drew another circle. Now they're just gonna go from these intersection points. So now we've got an intersection point here and here. So then we'd be able to connect this one, this intersection to this one, and then we would continue to follow along and go from each intersection point, keeping our compass the same setting. Let me get a different color there. Okay, so keeping this the same setting, getting another intersection point, connecting, and continuing on. So doing another one, connecting intersection to intersection. Drawing another circle, intersection to intersection, and then you've got this last one. So you don't have to draw that last circle, but you certainly could. And it's actually not even the last one because we've still got one that would complete it here that we didn't draw around this point. But you you had all of the inner, you had all the points without having to finish that if you wanted to. But then you can see we get that regular hexagon drawn in there at all those intersection points. And how would we know that each of the sides of this shape are the same length? Because all of these circles are congruent. We kept the same radius here. So if you take a look at um, this, let's go to this circle. So if we looked at this circle, so these blue lines are radii of that red circle, okay? Radii is the plural of radius, so it's radii. It's just the plural of radius. So then if we looked at this one and I just changed this one's color, Okay, the, um, these blue hexagon sides also come from the green circle's center. Okay, and then they are also radii of this circle. Okay, they are also radii of this circle. Okay, so all of these circles, the blue segments are radii of, so they are all going to be congruent. Um, all right, so then the lesson summary is on page 10 of your student workbook, and it just goes over what you did in this lesson. So what we're doing is constructing, okay, and constructing is a very specific definition in geometry. This means you have to be using a straight edge and a compass. 
So you need to be drawing circles with the compass, okay, and connecting intersections, ensuring that you have a radius and all of the measurements are precise. Okay, so again, that, that allows you to have that precise drawing. Okay, so exact drawings. So remember that we use a straight edge to draw a line segment. Okay, and actually if you want to lay the straight edge along that line segment, you can actually connect or you can actually extend those into a line. So you have the segment that's just between A and B, and then you have this line that's the longer one. So line AB, also written like this, AB with a picture of a line above it. And then you have the line segment is the one that just connects from A to B. Okay, so line segment AB in words or also AB with a picture of just a segment above there starting and stopping at um, those two points. Then we've got a circle. Okay, so remember that a circle is drawn with a compass. So we use a compass to draw a circle and they're giving you the definition of a circle here. Okay, so a circle is the set of all points that's the same distance from the center. So that's what ensures that all of the radii within there are exactly equal. So any radius in here, so from F to G is going to be equal to here, is going to be equal to here. All of these orange segments, these radii are equal because this black circle is all of the set is the set of all points that are the same distance from F. When we name a circle, um, we describe it using its center. So here, um, this is a circle centered at F. So we would call this circle F. You can also write it like this with a circle with a dot in the middle and F telling you that F is the center we also talk about the length of its radius. So this is circle F with a radius of FG. So vocabulary that showed up in this lesson, again, circle. So this is actually in the back of your student workbook in the glossary. So circle is on page 280. So you'll find this definition on page 280 of your workbooks. So you'd be able to write on it, highlight. Okay, so set of all points the same distance from the center point. And the back of your book gives you more verbiage than that. So if you want to change it up, write this, highlight some things, write yourself some notes. Okay, but it's the set of all points the same distance from the center. And then you have radius, which is the distance from the center to the edge. So on this picture, I will just highlight that in orange. Okay, so that, that's the radius. And then your center is that point O. So let me just highlight that in blue. So there's your center on this diagram. So make sure that you know those words. Some more vocabulary is line segment versus line. So I talked about that in the summary. Again, remember a line segment just connects A to B. A line goes through it. So if you ever need to extend a straight line on a piece of paper using your tools, you would do it with your comp or your straight edge and just lay it down and extend it. 